And then that takes us to two sideways pages in your manual called Herbal Agents. And if you've not been listening along to some previous audio or CDs or MP3, you need to remember a little rule. If it starts with a G, it increases the risk of what? Bleeding. If you don't know that, write it down. If it starts with a G, it usually increases the risk of bleeding. So let me show you a few. Here we go. First one, ginger. Far right hand side increases the risk of bleeding. People take it for GI, nausea, dyspepsia, sometimes constipation. Okay. Ginseng, far right hand side increases the risk of bleeding. Come on over to the top of the next page. Ginkgo biloba increases the risk of bleeding. Far right hand side of the chart. And then all the way down to high-dose garlic increases the risk of bleeding. Now let's back up to St. John's wort. St. John's wort increases the risk of clotting. Okay, clotting. So you can almost see a potential test question right there. Which ones cause bleeding? Which ones cause clotting? Now let's talk more about St. John's wort. Why do most people take St. John's wort? To help with their depression. And uh, that's important to remember because some people think it helps their anxiety and their sleep. But also look at the fourth dot. It may improve BPH symptoms. Sorry, the microphone is just going all over the place. It's like I had it up here, I had it over there, it moves on the right. I can tell the difference in the volume. However, look at the fourth dot. It may improve BPH symptoms in some men. And that's noteworthy because we talked about in the renal section, saw palmetto. So saw palmetto and St. John's wort may help some men with their prostate complaints. However, Remember that on the far right hand side, the third dot, St. John's wort has a lot of drug interactions and particularly in combination with the SSRIs. Remember, why do people most take it? Depression. What's the most widely prescribed class of antidepressants? SSRIs. And so in combination with SSRIs, it can contribute to serotonin syndrome. And there we go again. Another time I've mentioned that, I would expect it to be on your test somewhere. Spike a big temperature, come in the ER, kind of coming out of their skin, have to be flushed out with IV fluids. But also notice that St. John's wort may decrease the effect of oral contraceptives. So if she's depressed on St. John's wort, taking an SSRI, and of childbearing age, two forms of contraception would be a good idea. Here's another star highlight. It may decrease the effects of DIG and others. And also at the same time, it may increase the effects of opioids, narcotics, and others. So anesthesia is always worried about the St. John's wart person because if they have to have a, a patient who's an urgent appendectomy and go right to surgery, then it could mess with their potion in the back, right, when they are doing anesthesia. But again, that decreases the effects of DIG could be a disaster, especially in that kind of fragile heart failure patient. Then your man says to you, well, you know, I take something just to be a little bit more on my game. When I take this stuff, I just feel so much more alert and I can concentrate better. I think it helps my memory. What is he talking about? Ginkgo. Ginkgo biloba is one I would know here because not only if you see in the second dot that it, the first dot, that it may help memory and concentration. Look on in down the page it may help with intermittent claudication. And so what diagnosis does he have? Peripheral vascular disease that is arterial. So if somebody has claudication, that might be something they may be on or might consider. 
and yet as we talked about far right hand side increases the risk of bleeding and look at the third dot it may also increase blood pressure though over time okay all right and then your lady says that she takes something for her female problems and you say oh is it black cohosh and she says no you know i've heard about that but uh, i don't it's not black cohosh that's not what i take and then you say well could it be what evening primrose is the answer look the same intended uses for improving premenstrual and menopausal discomfort okay and she says yep that's it knew it had something to do with the nighttime mm -hmm. evening primrose and yet uh she has she's a type 2 diabetic type 2 diabetic notice the far right hand side it may elevate her blood glucose then your lady kind of sings to you oh, i take kava kava and oh it just helps me relax so much especially with a couple of glasses of wine okay and you say look at the far right hand side it may improve your relaxation but watch out alcohol increases toxic effects and it can also two dots down impair reaction time when driving but again while she's so much more relaxed um, and yet it doesn't disrupt her mental clarity she thinks over the long haul look at the first dot long-term doses and higher doses can lead to hypertension among others okay so very good i think that will definitely get you through what you need for herbals but i would expect about two questions at least coming up on your national exam about herbs so they're very popular today and of course some people don't call them herbs they just call them other things they take and you have to ask the question carefully okay so stay right where i've been and you should be in a good spot for questions on herbs